Jerry. 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 Yeah. Or she might be here a little later. Yeah. Sorry. Get her in when we want to get there. All right, we're all set, sir. All right. Great. Okay. Uh, good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, Summers Board of Selectmen for Thursday, June 2nd, 2022. And I'd like to start off with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, with me tonight are uh, Schleckman, uh, Bob Schmidt on my left, and... Uh, Police Administrator uh, Kim Liddig, uh, Direct Director of Public Works Todd Rowland, um, CFO Mike Marinaccio, and uh, Brian Wissinger, uh, Assistant Director of Finance. So, uh, public comment. We don't have any public here this evening. Must have worn them out at our last meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, presentation by first selectman. I just thought I would review some of the things that I'd mentioned at the last meeting because they're still relevant date wise. Uh, and just to help mention a few other events that are going on, just so people are aware of important things that are happening in summers and uh, in the near term. First of all, uh, as I mentioned last month, uh, June is dog licensing month. Licenses are available at the town clerk's office. Uh, the rabies uh, clinic scheduled uh, for June 11th from 10 to 12 at the Department of Public Works garage, uh, 93 Egypt Road. Summers High School grads are uh, celebrating an annual uh, vehicle parade uh, where they drive around town on, on prescribed routes and uh, with clearance from police and okay. support by the fire department and that's a Saturday, right? Big event on okay. June 11th, June 11th. Yeah. Okay. Next time. Next which time. is a Saturday uh, okay. from is that a Saturday? Or Saturday? I thought it was June 12th. So. It's, it's, a it's a Sunday. Sunday. Oh, it's oh. Sunday. Oh, okay. it's the rabies clinic Saturday. Yeah. Oh, all right. Thank yeah. you. Rabies is June 11th. Right. The parade. No, June parade is oh, June okay. 11th. Right? The parade is June 12th. 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 It's not the next day after the rain. Okay. The parade is June 12th? Yeah, it's 11th to 1. All okay, right. Okay, good. Thank you. I had it wrong two weeks ago, so I'm glad I'm correcting it now. So it's Sunday, June 12th, okay. from 11 to 1. So you have to live on the route. Uh, we do. Be on the lookout for uh, some people having fun and, and having a good time and celebrating their graduation. There's a free uh, document shredding day on June 18th from 9 to 12. June 18, 9 to 12, Town Hall parking lot, right in the back. Uh, those are reminders of things I've mentioned before and corrections. And uh, additional announcements include the uh, Paul Bowers uh, lacrosse tournament, which should bring how about the population for that? Do you think about 15? How many people? Five to six thousand. Five to six thousand. That's over the weekend. Wow. Yeah, between uh, both yeah. days. So, so Paul Bowers lac okay. uh, lacrosse yeah. tournament is June 4th and 5th, this Saturday and Sunday. School fields park. and the park, field park. Uh, and uh, weather's supposed to be outstanding both days, so it should be a great crowd. Yeah. Also, uh, household hazards waste uh, is June 4th, correct? This Saturday, Manchester Transfer Station. Oh, I usually do the staff right now. 321 Olcott Street in Manchester. 321 Olcott, Olcott yeah. Street, Street, Manchester. And also the same day, June 4th, this Saturday, is the uh, paint collection at the Summers Transfer Station. And uh, 
uh, just to mention the new employees that have uh, originally been hired by the town, we have uh, Dan Parisi is the director of land use. His first day of work is June 20th of this year. And uh, Donna Richardson, who's been hired as the senior center supervisor, and her first day is also June 20th. I wonder when Jeff Boyd is still working. <laughs> yeah, he's still, he's not yeah, I saw him here today. So, so that's it for my presentations. Uh, consent agenda. Under boards and commissions, we have a request uh, for the appointment of Anna Levesque to the Economic Development Commission with a term expiring December 22nd, 2027. I've got a couple of letters I wanted to mention. First of all, Ann uh, wrote a letter to myself and the other two selectmen on the 24th of May saying I'd like to become part of the Economic Development Commission. I feel I have a good, good qualifications because I'm very interested in the future of the town of Summers and would work hard at trying to find win-win solutions at growing development here. Also, as a lifelong resident of the community, I am very familiar with the past and present situations in Summers, as well as the many people who live here who would like to see more development that would benefit them as taxpayers. Please consider my request at your next Board of Selectmen meeting. Should there be any further information you need, please don't hesitate to ask. I also have a letter from um, the chair of the Democratic Town Committee saying as chair of the Summers D Democratic Town Committee, I'd like to recommend Ann Levesque as a member of the Economic Development Commission. Ann is highly committed to the town and is being, as being the best place to live in for all. Uh, she is willing to put in time and effort to make valuable contributions to any group. Uh, thank you, Terry Schmidt, Chair of Summers DPC. So we need a motion to... Yeah, I'd uh, like to make a motion to appoint Ann Levesque to the Economic Development Commission with a term expiring on 12 22 Great. I'll second that motion. Any, uh, any further discussion? No, I think it's a great idea. Great. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay, next item on the agenda is the uh, opportunity to add urgent agenda items. We have one item that uh, just until recently we weren't sure whether it was going to be on the agenda or not, but I'd like to add it. It's a salary adjustment for uh, Lisa Madden, town tax collector. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Mike Marinaccia to uh, say a few words on why sure. this is sure. Do you important. want to make a motion to add? Oh, yeah, mo yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah. you Motion to add an agenda item, uh, being a salary adjustment for Lisa Madden. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Uh, and uh, any further discussion? All those in support say aye. 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 Okay, so we have it uh, as an agenda item. Ask uh, Mike Marinaccio to uh, explain why this is such an important uh, request. Yes, it is. Um, I have to say that I'm fully aware that we're considering um, having an HR consultant come on board to do um, a review of our salaries and our and our job descriptions. <clears throat> but I, I didn't feel that um, this adjustment can wait until the completion of that project. Uh, and, and I'm sure that project will only validate um, what I believe I've, I've found on this. I've, I've done a, a pretty extensive survey using uh, a CCM database um, and I've done it in, I've sliced it in three different ways towns with a similar population of summers towns that surround us um, two towns around all around us except for Massachusetts and then uh, towns of our similar t type in, in Tallinn County so all of them are um, and the reason for this is that um, Lisa and I have been talking about her her current compensation, and it is it is pretty low when you look at the <coughs> comps. Um, 
and she has been given without interview job offers uh, because she's well known. Uh, she is the vice president of the Connecticut Taxpayers Association, co-president of Holland County, Wyndham County. She's responsible for putting together training courses for tax collectors. I mean, so in other towns, yeah, in, yeah for the state, mm -hmm. the state OPM asks her to help put together courses also. So, so we're talking about a, a person of a, a pretty high uh, caliber, and I just don't want to lose her to another competitive opportunity. Um, when, when you, when the salary I'm proposing here is, would be probably what you'd have to go to the streets with to get her replacement anyway. So um, it's a real competitive environment for for tax collectors and and for uh, assessors. So my my uh, let, just to make a long story short, because we really don't want to go through all the technical stuff yeah. here, is that her got a lot of material, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, there's a lot of material. Yeah. I, I, I have I agree. previously discussed it with you, and I think yeah. you're pretty well informed right. on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, I'm proposing that her current salary of $68,959 be um, adjusted and increased to $78,000. Um, and uh, the funding for that increase really is already available uh, in two places. Uh, one in the annual increase pool, um, which will be applied uh, at uh, July 1st, and in the tax department salaries themselves. Uh, because of the uh, occurrence of a, a long-term absence because of medical reasons. We won't be paying the part-time person. So the funds are in the budget. Um, mm -hmm. Will it be an increase in future years? Uh, no more of an increase than it will be for anyone else if the consultant says our salaries are below market and we have a, we need to up our, all of our salaries. So. Um, and just just as an aside on that, um, I think I was talking to uh, uh, Bob Schmidt the other day. You know, I did receive. I'm sorry, I'm digressing somewhat here, but but I did receive a letter from the de deputy treasury, and I'm sure all everybody who's getting ARPA funds received this letter. I'm not the only one. In urging state and local governments to use it, uh, the money to provide competitive wages to, for their for government employees. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I'm, I'm of the belief that when and if this consultant does come up with some recommendations, any delta in our salary item for the, for the town would, could well be funded by ARPA funds. And, and we, we would have to just make a request to use those funds to get, to get that process approved. But so, I'm saying this is kind of like uh, my 911 911 call uh, ahead of this because honestly I, I just don't really want to lose her um, to something that's really um, where we don't have to. So um, that's that's my pitch. It's it's approximately a 13 percent increase uh, from 68 959 to 78 thousand. So I'm looking for you to approve that. Great, thank you. Uh, First of all, I'd like to say that I uh, just endorse your comments and reiterate the importance that I've witnessed of Lisa Madden as the direct the tax collector and, and uh, phenomenal manager and high energy and very knowledgeable uh, professional. Uh, and I'd like to make a motion that uh, we increase the salary effective July 1, 2022 for Lisa Madden, town tax collector, it would be increased from its current level of $68,959 to $78,000 a year, which would include any annual performance salary increase she's warranted uh, for the fiscal year 2022. Second that. Any, any words from you? No, I, I agree yeah. with, uh, yeah. with uh, you know, your, both your assessments, and I'm glad we're doing it. Um, she'd come to me months ago telling me that she was offered $10,000 more by another town, and uh, it, was, it was a big concern, and everybody else I know is concerned too, so I'm glad we're uh, being proactive and rewarding her for her efforts. Great. All those in support of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes.
you. So next we have uh, from finance and transfers or appropriations. Uh, CFO's report. We got a few items. Um, our independent auditors were here this week on site. It's kind of refreshing after COVID to actually have people show up on site rather than talk to them on Zoom. And mm -hmm. it was uh, so they've, they've been here um, doing preliminary work for the fiscal year end 2022 uh, for the town and the board of ed. So they were actually at the at the board of ed and then at the town. So they're finished with their on-site work this week. They'll probably be back um, in September or early October. Um, this time of the year we file a lot of reports with an uh, OPM, Office of Policy and Management. Um, and w the way it's done now, it, it, it's electronically done and we have to uh, actually go into the database and enter the data ourselves. We used to be able to just email it to them and hey, that was it, we didn't have to worry. Once again, the state has made the town um, responsible for doing things. So. Uh, along with our filing our annual, um, our adopted budget, which is filed, we also file our auditors, who our auditors are going to be, and we've done all that. But there's, a, there's another piece to filing our annual budget, and it's called the municipal spending cap. And a few years back, the state um, passed a, a um, it's a law that says the town should not exceed the 2.5% municipal spending cap or the rate of inflation, whichever is higher. So that's two and a half percent of the current year of the present the, the prior year right. uh, over. So Less we are we are over two and a half percent of our prior year. However, it's an adjustment. So you, you come up with an, an, an adjusted budget increase. Uh, you, you have to deduct capital costs, you have to deduct special education costs, and you have to deduct debt service costs out of there. And when you do that, our increase over last year is 3.49%. We're under what the, what the state OPM says is inflation rate now, which is 6.83%. So we're successfully filed under the state. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you were to be over, there is a potential of you being penalized state aid. But that was... They've never done that to anybody, and, and so we, and, uh, CCM doesn't, uh, I don't think it'll ever happen. It doesn't sound like much of a rule if it's not enforced, right? I mean, well, yeah, but, 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 but because it it's a law, they require us okay. to file, so we passed. file. Yeah. The grant that it was supposed to be deducted from, from is not never given. got funded. Right. It was supposed to be funded from sales tax, yeah. and they never funded it from sales tax. Funded. Uh, I suppose the le legislature could resurrect that and say, okay, let's start this grant up. And the moment they do, then if you're over the funding cap, I think for every half a percent or whatever, it's 50000 off or something 50 like cents that. 50 on the dollar. Yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah. But anyway, so we filed that this week, too. I just want to let you know that the state says inflation is 6.83, so... That's a little low, but that's... And so we're, we're still even below that without our adjusted Based budget. on March numbers, Bob. I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> okay. The other, the other item is the, uh, the, the ARPA report. I keep saying we're going to get a final report. We're getting a final report next week. We got a draft report this week. We reviewed it. We commented. All our comments have been incorporated. So Monday or Tuesday, there'll be a, a final ARPA small business and nonprofit report uh, with charts and narratives and everything. So, Who are you going to share that with? We'll share that with everybody. So, yeah. so we'll, we'll get a probably get about ten copies or so. We'll get a copy of that too. So. <laughs> well, uh, we're you know, we'll get a copy and then we'll, we'll decide how many we want to make because we oh. we didn't tell the oh, consultant yeah. to get yeah. okay. do that. We will do it ourselves and we'll probably get it done a little bit cheaper. So. All right, okay. So you can give the job to Lisa. She's done she, <laughs> she did. Cheaper is not to work. More economically is to work. So. So. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yep. Uh, presentation of scheduled payments. We have a list here. Yes. For three. Totally. Yeah. Motion for that. Yeah. 
I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, approve uh, payment uh, of $341,944.51. Uh, should I put the date in, too, for June 2nd, 2022? No, that's fine. All right. Yeah, okay. Great, thank you. Yeah. yeah, I've reviewed the list myself and asked questions, and uh, I have no, no concerns of items that are in here, and they're all pretty well justified. That looks fine to me. Great. Great. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Updates from boards and commissions. I don't think we have any of those this evening. No. Pending business. Uh, there is a topic that we discussed at our meeting two weeks ago, discussion and possible action to authorize uh, for the first selectman to sign the Human Resource Services Engagement Letter with a Miss Kathy Lampkin of a company called HR2U Incorporated. Uh, this is a, uh, a human resources uh, consultant who's had well over 20 years of experience in the business. Uh, as a result of uh, the discussion we had two weeks ago at a Board of Selectmen meeting, we asked uh, Ms. Lampkin to send us uh, copies of her work product and references, which she did. I have uh, been able to contact two of the three references, who uh, one of whom was uh, the village administrator of something called the village of Antioch, Illinois, and he basically said they have a population of 15,000 people. They used her for uh, six to seven years already. They still are using her. Uh, they basically have the same issues that we have. They're, they were interested in having uh, job descriptions written, uh, salary um, ranges uh, written as well. Also had their uh, employee manual updated, and they also used her for uh, police dis dis disciplinary issues. So I know she's very experienced in uh, uh, disciplinary actions involving town employees, and uh, they did a compensation study. Uh, and then I also I talked to the. Uh, the town manager for the town of Westerly, Rhode Island, who uh, is the former police chief there too, by the way. I thought that was interesting. Uh, very, uh, by the name of Sean Lacey, very uh, interesting gentleman. And he basically, they used her for the same reasons. Uh, job descriptions, salary scales, updating their handbook, uh, in investigations and discipline uh, recommendations. So. They're very pleased with her, still using her to this day. In fact, I think we just spoke with her this this today sometime. So, uh, do, you, do you have a chance to review her work product? Yes, I did. I reviewed her work product I, and uh, looked outstanding, uh, very impressive, and uh, didn't have all the information you did from talking to people who had worked with her, which was great to hear. And uh, <coughs> I just looked at the consulting agreement that's here in our packet. and. Uh, Earlier this week, I sent uh, you and uh, Mr. Meyer uh, a few additions I'd like to see to that. Uh, you kind of alluded to them right there in what you said. One of the things that I'd like to have her also do, besides the things that are here in this consulting agreement that you uh, sent us, is I'd like to uh, have her uh, define the role of a human resource director for us and to uh, give us a job description for somebody who's part-time as well as full-time. So it uh, gives us an option of hiring either part-time or full-time. And I'd also like to, as you suggested just now, to make sure that you review the uh, employee handbook uh, with various uh, additions, subtractions, and other types of suggestions that she would have. I know there's been a lot of concerns about um, what's been in the employee handbook going back when, we, when I first started uh, in January and February. I didn't realize that, but I, from what I can gather from talking to Mr. Wissinger, there's been a lot of concerns about what's been in there, 
So I think it's a good thing that we have her review that too at the same time. And uh, hopefully then she'll come back to us with um, you know, some suggestions. And that's what we, I hope she'll be able to do and she'll be able to get things started. Great. Uh, Bob, so you, you also did uh, present something that you sent to the two of us. Right, right, yeah. And I, and Selectman Meyer and myself. Right, uh, yeah, that was, yeah. Which you talked about, we needed to mention her hourly wage, which is $110 per hour. Yeah. Uh, length of employment as a consultant. Uh, we discussed, you know, we, we were thinking maybe somewhere around uh, six months. Six months, is that what you're thinking? Okay. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, it's well, we'll see how it goes. Initial, just, it's just an open-ended uh, Well, I like the way you had it worded in the agreement, agreement that we can, you know, she or we can... Terminate at any time. Terminate at any time, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and her responsibilities would include such things as uh, job descriptions for town staff by department, and as you mentioned, also part-time workers as well. Yeah. And uh, a, a salary schedule for town staff uh, or by department. Yeah, I think that goes along with what Mr. Marinaccio had uh, suggested and he had given us this information uh, earlier this year when we were doing the budget. He had already given us some salaries, uh, salary structure of several of the employees in town compared to uh, other towns in the, uh, in the area and uh, certainly uh, showed that we need to uh, address that issue. So comparative salary uh, yeah. uh, assessment. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and ob obviously the, our salaries are in the middle to lower end compared to the towns surrounding us. Okay, and uh, also uh, that would also include the uh, role of a human resource director if we hired one uh, mm -hmm. with a job description and a salary range that right. she might recommend. Yeah, for full time or part time. Yeah, right. And I like whether yeah, full or part time. Yeah, see see how it goes. I mean, I. I I don't know what that what the wages would be. I'm sure it isn't cheap, but you know. Okay, and then uh, she said review of the employee handbook, which would basically be uh, updating it. And at the same time, we could be uh, adding things to it that we've uh, voted on this committee. Yeah, yeah right. There were the some concerns we already recent. found. As I said, Brian has already pointed out to us this year that there's some serious deficiencies. Right, and and the assumption here also is that uh, we would use town employees to the extent we that they're available to assist her in coming up with the information that she needs yeah, and hope so. do some uh, <laughs> research for her. Yeah, I want to work as a team. And yeah. also would cut back on our expenses too. Okay. Yeah. okay. Do we have a motion to uh, Yeah, I could, would be uh, happy to make it authorize me to sign a consulting agreement with her with these uh, stipulated uh, recommendations? Yeah, I'd be happy to make a motion to hire Cancer Kathy Lampkin as a uh, Consultant with the uh, stipulations that are spelled out in this agreement and that we've discussed here tonight. Great. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Motion passed. <laughs> so, new, we're on to new business. Letter I in our uh, agenda. Discussion of possible action of staffing requests for summer camp social worker. Uh, I should also should have mentioned that at the beginning of the meeting, uh, Allison Maynard, our director of social services, joined us, as did uh, Fire Chief uh, Roach. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, good evening. So I'm here to present um, at the camp social worker position, which is a new position that was approved under ARPA funding. Um, so the individual that we interviewed, Maureen Purcell and I actually interviewed her, and then um, she had a separate interview with Kim Halligan and um, Carly, I don't know her last name, but our camp director. Um, what is it? Bergamini. 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 Yeah. Okay, Carly yeah. Bergamini. Um, and we all agreed she was an excellent candidate. She's a recent graduate with her master's in social work from UConn. Um, she did her internship in the Hartford Public School System. She wants to be a school social worker. Um, that's who we were hoping to recruit for this position as somebody who has obviously her summers off. Um, and so um, we would like to extend an offer to her to be our uh, camp social worker uh, working for the eight weeks of summer camp, 30 hours a week. Yeah, she was, she was awesome. You know, she's, a, she's an athlete, so she also really enjoys 
to sports and was excited to be at a camp and be active with kids. Um, and and Carly thought she would be a really great fit, fit for the team too. So yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Do a motion to. Uh, I'd be happy to make a motion to hire uh, Kelly Martin for the position of camp social worker for 30 hours a week for eight weeks and now hourly rate of 40 dollars an hour. Yes. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion aye. passes. Aye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Next item is a presentation and action on drug urinalysis screening program for Summers Police Officers per Police Accountability Act. You got it. Miss Liddy. <laughs> You got the floor. Thank you. Um, so per the police accountability uh, bill, um, all police officers during their three-year annual certification, uh, recertification, um, need to do a drug urinalysis test, including anabolic steroids. Uh, so we contracted with Foley Services out of Hartford, um, had them make up um, the, the forms, the necessary forms that we need. Uh, we will go to... Um, Enfield to Johnson Occupational Health have the testing done. Oh, okay. Um, same that Public Works uses. Um, oh, that's same already, people. Uh, yeah, same people. They yeah. just need a different form. Same test. Um, it's no. Uh, no, it's a different test. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is. Yeah. Right. Oh. So this test is for uh, steroids and what else? This test is for steroids. It is for cocaine, amphetamines, methamphetamines, opiates, cannabinoids, and I cannot pronounce that last one. Fencilidine. <laughs> 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 it's basically PCP or angel dust. I oh, think it's what oh, it's yeah. hallucinogen um, is what it, it says if you look up the definition Jeez. of that one. No wonder they um, call it PCP, so, <laughs> so they can't pronounce it. So this policy mirrors the state police policy as a resident trooper town. We, we fall under their contract. Uh, so we married their policy um, throughout. Um, get them for testing, uh, the testing, the procedures for testing. Um, if you have a, a positive test, um, uh, we go with the town uh, medical review officer um, and uh, decide whether or not we want to put them on an administrative um, leave. Um, and it's up to the doctor and then the state police whether somebody would get terminated or uh, whether those are authorized drugs that are in their system for some reason. Okay, I understand this uh, oh, no. this uh, policy has been, uh, program has been vetted through the through Pat town McHale. attorney, Pat yeah. McHale. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. That's Pat McHale is the attorney. You yeah, Pat with. McHale. Okay. He said it's fine. And it mirrors other towns as well. It mirrors, yeah, we uh, contacted Ellington um, and it mirrors the state police policy. Great. Do you have a motion to uh, get the group? Yeah, the uh, this is the uh, drug urinalysis screening program for Summers Police Office. Correct. Right. Okay. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, discussion and possible action to authorize first selectman to sign uh, the agreement between the town of Summers and the North Central Conservation District. This uh, is basically uh, Joanne Shapiro. Who ha how long has she been working for us? How long has Joanne been here? Uh, I've been here for. More than eight years, right? Is it no, Dave Eskew was here when I started. Was? Um, okay. But she's been here probably six years, maybe mm -hmm. seven. Yeah. yeah. So this is a uh, basically it's an extension of an existing agreement, as far as I know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, cost is about sixteen thousand five hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Yep. And. Um, So we need a motion to authorize signature of the agreement. 
Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, make a motion to authorize uh, you to sign an agreement with the what, the Central Conservation District. Yeah. Yes. Great. Thank you. And how long was this? I didn't know how long. Was this uh, twenty twenty seven. Yeah, it's a five year agreement. Five year agreement. Yeah, five year okay. Agreement. All right. Sorry, I just forgot. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, it's yeah. written right in the agreement. Yeah, yeah I, I apologize. It's effective until uh, June 30th, 2027. Okay, well, that's good. Glad to hear that. Thank you. I'll second that motion. Uh, any further discussion? All those in support of the agreement say aye. 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 Thank you. Signing the agreement. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, next is a discussion of possible action to authorize the first electman to sign the Watchog Road Culvert Project Contract. Uh, Director of Public Works, yeah. Mr. Rowland. <laughs> I mean, she used to kill us when I hear it. I know, I was like, what? <laughs> uh, good evening, yes, yeah, so this is a project that's been coming for a while. Uh, the culverts uh, on Watchog Road have failed. Uh, we made a bridge out of riprap and then paved over it temporarily because the culverts have rotted out. Uh, something we've been looking at for a while. Jeff Ward actually did the engineering and the RFP, most of it, uh, before he retired, and uh, I finished it. And then we posted the this project uh, this spring, and we received um, quite a number of bids, actually, more than I expected. Uh, I think it was in the order of 10 companies. There we go. Um, and actually, six companies got back to us. Uh, and Avery Construction Company, a summer's company, was the lowest bidder. Um, they have provided all of their insurance and bonding to us, um, and they have a good reputation and have worked for us in the past. I think they'll do a good job. The plan right now is if the uh, board lets the uh, first selectman sign the agreement, then they'll get working on this this summer. We will be closing Watchog Road at that location, and we'll be detouring all the traffic around for two months because uh, they have to open the road up and, uh, and divert the water. What two months do you think those will be? Uh, July and August. Uh, we're shooting to be done, or at least have a lane open by the time schools um, reopened. That's always subject to weather. Um, hopefully, it's dry. Yeah. And they'll be able to go. Because I remember they had a lot of trouble with this road. It was flooding in the past, right? It's the, yeah, and that it, that's part of it. It's the, the flooding. It overtops those culverts um, when we get enough rainfall. It's yeah. uh, it's part of the Scanic watershed area, so yeah. mm -hmm. it's still going to flood. Right. Um, these culverts will be bigger and they'll take more water, but once the water level on both sides, you know, reaches a level that goes over the road, it doesn't yeah. matter what the culverts are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a road closure, are any uh, residents going to be unable to get to their homes? No, it's accessible in both directions. I will send letters to everyone on those roads, uh, just letting them know the, the plan, right. and we'll post everything on Everbridge and the town website and Facebook, and um, uh, they'll have access from either end. Just Actually, like doing Devon's where I live, that floods almost every yeah other year. And that one is a culvert issue, though. Those culvert is undersized. There, yeah, is that the culvert? Is that the reason why it yeah. always backs up on the other side? Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that, but also Battle Street is another. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. During heavy flows. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't even hardly get to the dump yeah. last last spring because there were so many roads all flooded. And that's an emergency. What? <laughs> that's a real emergency. <laughs> but you know, it was kind of funny, though, really. Yeah. Well, it's all through the center of town. Because I couldn't Battle get through Battle Street and I couldn't get through Seven, so I, I had to go. Uh, I had to go all the way up. Yeah. Great, uh, Bob. Would you like to make a motion to authorize the first selectman to sign the Watchog Road Culvert Project contract? Yeah, I'd certainly like to make a motion to have the selectman be authorized to sign the uh, Watchog Road project. Great. Uh, I'll second that motion. Any. Further discussion? Any questions? No. Great. Sounds good. Great. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Discussion of possible oh, action yeah. existing uh, <laughs> new complaints at Camp Iapo. Yeah, this is. Uh, complaints too, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've been partying this year again, huh? <laughs> This Camp IPO is, uh, you can explain the background on all this, but uh, I personally have received some complaints over the last couple of weeks from town residents who have complained about, this on weekends in particular, dogs being off leashes, uh, overcrowding, uh, multiple uh, 
automobiles, uh, the majority of the automobiles from out of state, uh, lack of a porta potty. I put down call Todd Rowland when I knew too many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple other things uh, swearing, uh, uh, children being knocked underwater by dogs in the water. And litter, oh, yeah, major litter issues. Um, so maybe you could uh, respond could to that. Get, we can talk about some of the things that we've already done, done and, and um, anticipate. The, the town acquired this property in 2016, I believe. Um, we acquired it mostly through a grant through DEP. Uh, part of the grant says that it has to be used for passive recreation, hunting, fishing. We don't allow hunting, but fishing. Um, uh, Non-motorized boats in the lake, uh, hiking, any kind of uh, pickup games, but no organized games. Uh, what the town did at the time was carve out three acres, essentially in the middle where the buildings used to be. Yeah, how much camp. is the total acreage? Uh, 177 acres, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Um, three of which is the, where the camp buildings used to be. The mm -hmm. town carved that out and purchased it with its own open space money, so it wouldn't be restricted. That area we could do something with if we ever chose to. Um, and since that time, the Open Space and Trails Committee uh, became involved and in, in remarked some trails and, and created new ones. Uh, also, there's been some Boy Scout and also Rotary has been up there uh, funding, uh, putting on some bridges around the uh, lake. Uh, Boy Scouts actually putting in some benches this year and did some last year. So there's been a lot of community activity to support this. Uh, members of Open Space are always up there maintaining it. Um, so it's active. We, uh, on the town side, we've put up a lot of signage on do's and don'ts, make sure your dogs are on leashes. The police department has stepped up patrols and does every year, and also the animal control officer is up there as often as feasible, particularly on the weekends. He was up there all weekend, this past weekend, uh, to try to uh, get people to keep their dogs leashed. Um, the, the complaints have gotten more numerous the last couple of years. COVID certainly had an effect with people getting out and nothing to do, so they discovered the camp. Uh, words kind of on the street where it wasn't as busy as it is now. We have trash receptacles up there. The Parks Department does go up and empty them. We've had porta potties in the past, however, they're always vandalized, usually ripped out, ripped out. We chain them, but they're ripped out of the ground and flipped over. Last year, they set off a lot of um, fireworks in them and actually set it on fire, so it was destroyed. And our vendor said they're not putting anyone up there anymore. You know, so we could buy one, but we don't have anywhere to clean it. Um, so, you know, that's a concern. We really should have bathrooms up there, but uh, it's a challenge. Unless we staff it, um, it's a challenge to get people to do the right thing. Now, 95% of the people that go up there and use it are reasonable, pleasant, and, and they, they abide by decency. It's the 5% that we would deal with every and the 5% that are going up there after hours and having fires and drinking and letting their dogs run wild. Um, and throwing trash in the side yeah, of the road. Yeah, and they don't read signs. I mean, I, I, we put up they a lot of signs. Care. Well, that's, yeah, they don't. Um, so it, it's a challenge. What we would, uh, the first selectman and I had talked about is perhaps forming an ad hoc committee if the uh, Board of Selectmen uh, sees fit and then take a look at all of these issues and look at what could we do. Um, we, a lot of the town staff has thought if we could build a facility up there and utilize it and actually make a public safety office and have some bathrooms uh, so it could be staffed by an officer whether uh, the uh, ACO or a police officer at different times particularly when it's busy on the weekend that would help. We could put up cameras. We could also utilize a facility to run rec programming so we'd have organized programming going on there with town staff around which would help um, discourage poor activities uh, that are happening up there. There's a lot of people that use the camp. There's Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts that have their green and gold uh, ceremonies. Um, it is very well utilized. It's, it's, it's a gem, frankly. It needs attention and it, I think the residents, and it's one of the things that came out in the survey that, uh, that the COVID survey was so IFO came up a lot in utilizing it more and perhaps a facility. Open Space and Trails uh, Committee would be very interested in a facility up there um, to run some of their own programming and trail hikes and things of that. Well, you know, you know, years before the town bought it, there used to be somebody up there. There's a caretaker. Yeah. There's a caretaker. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know what happened? As soon as the caretaker was no longer there, right. they, they burned the place down. And yeah. 
and it just unfortunately was destroyed. And that was part of the reason we had decided to take all the buildings down because they were all vandalized and the yeah. space was disrepair. I mean, that's just sad because I know when my son, you know, and you know, and I went up there for you know Boy Scout camping years ago. Yeah. And it was it was marvelous. I mean, and my daughter uh, acted in the the you know the main building there. They had that beautiful fireplace. Oh, the Avery Hall. Yeah. yeah, it was just unbelievable yeah. that main hall, and it, it was just kind of sad because it was a wonderful place and yeah. a lot of people used it um, and. Uh, I remember how busy you, you just see the buses going up there. Yeah. Was it the was it 4-H or I can't it remember. It was a wide W Y W C yeah, yeah. And there's just buses constantly going up there. So I think it's worth protecting. And I and I like your thought process about getting somebody up there as much as we can. Because mm. it, it sounds like we're gonna have to because uh, it's going to I mean as more people discover it, it just increases with use and the problems will increase because you I, have I, I mean I don't have any proof, but from what I'm hearing cars are coming from out of state. They are, but part of the grant is it's open to the public, not Connecticut, it's the public. So right. we can't restrict who goes up there. Right. But there's that's where some of the there's a lot jumps and stuff is coming from. It's think? hard to say. Is it you all think, yeah. Massachusetts people and the yeah, versus Connecticut? It's, it's gonna to be know. the five percent that okay. don't okay. respect anything anyway. So okay. it's both states. It's both states is not okay. Uh, and most people are, are very respectful and, and, and love it just the ones that aren't that we deal with all the time. Um, so uh, I guess my request is to form some kind of an ad hoc committee to look at it. We'd have to talk about who could be on the committee, but certainly neighbors, uh, people from open space. I would suggest myself and Maureen Farceau, uh, perhaps Ken Leonard if she has the time for police, um, mm -hmm. to really look at this facility and this, this, this land and see the best way forward. I know I have ideas on what I would like to see, but it really should be uh, come from a total group. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I know the people over here for finance are kind of uh, <laughs> very interested in it. They can, they can well, there's those two, so they can of the two, perceive there's three. There's three. There's three. There's three. Okay, but there's Slow two down. here. They perceive <laughs> a lot of uh, cost that goes along with this. Of yeah. course, this 177-acre parcel is... Um, is a real gem, as you say. For the there town. is there actually the town Great did carve out six other building lots that border on uh, Camp Road and also Stafford Road that were never sold because at the time uh, there was enough residents against selling it, to, and the idea was to recoup some of the money that was used out of the local open space fund to replenish it. Um, so there is always that potential to sell off some building lots if, if that's the way the town wanted to go. But those that's there. All of that kind of stuff would have to be looked at by this ad hoc well, group and come up with some recommendations. Uh, so you, you could assist in coming up with the directives as to what the yes, ad hoc yeah, committee might very much need like to, to look at it. and review. And I would start with just a history of time frame, recent history and then mapping on exactly what it is, what we got, and then um, kind of some of the issues we have. It would be interesting if you could sell a couple of lots. Yeah, the ones that were farthest away from you Stafford know, Road. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, use that funding to help, you know, do something to protect the area and right. release it. Right. That's definitely yeah. a, yeah. Got potential. Space, yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's a question. I thought it had to go back to open space once we sold the What's property. What's that? If we sold the properties that were carved out as building lots, any any sale of property would go back to the open, <coughs> open space. Goes into the open space fund. Yes. We were just. We're just talking about that. There, there's oh, some okay. controversy. Some people believe that an open space fund should only be used for the purpose of open space. Mm -hmm. Others say that's not true. There really is no restriction. You can use that fund to maintain your open space also. So we would need to get a clarification on that. Maybe that's another possibility of a future ordinance. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. To clarify. I can see that. Yeah. Sure. Definitely. But it would be good to but clarify that. It is a gem, is yeah. a gem and it's, yeah. a, it's an opportunity. Yeah, it would yeah. be good to do something to protect it. At least I we, know we have to do something because yeah. it's Yeah, because my wife and I go up there, there, you know, once in a while to hike, and it's fantastic. And yeah. You know, we brought our you know grandchildren up there. It's, it's, a, it's a great place. You know, the summer's players used to have their annual plays yeah. done up there. Yep. And, uh, yeah. With dinners that went along with it. As a kid, I used to ice fish on that pond. Yeah. Uh, when I was like eight, nine, ten years old, it was <laughs> fantastic. That's nice. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of opportunity. So do we have a motion, Bob, uh, on uh, you want an ad hoc committee? Creating an ad hoc committee, advisory yeah. committee. I'd like to, if you create it now, come back with some suggestions for uh, yeah. 
people to staff I mean, because I want to reach out to the private sector. Committee and have you come back with suggestions yeah. on what should be done. And on who, who to staff the ad hoc on who to, on who to staff the ad hoc committee. Yep. Okay, thank you. Great. Uh, I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in support of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, discussion and possible action on fire department staffing request. Chief Rush. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so we're trying to uh, we're trying to fill an open position we've had for a little while now. Um, so I'd like to make an offer for uh, to uh, Christopher Ratula um, to fill the open position we have for firefighter um, on the career side. Um, coming from uh, started originally in Connecticut, but moved up to Massachusetts. So he is currently certified. He works the fire department up there. Fire officer one, nationally registered paramedic. Um, wow. So has some experience. Also has some experience in the public, in the private sector, doing fire protection, engineering, things like that. So sprinkler systems, uh, fire extinguishers, alarm systems, things like that, which we think we can help with our our outreach programs as well. How did you find uh, Mr. Ratula? Uh, so this time we we did several times. We did searches in state using a lot of their traditional tools that actually didn't come back with anything that was. Uh, or any leads that we thought were acceptable for the town. Um, we ended up other adjoining towns pay too much money for. Uh, we do, so we would, we ended up having to go. Indeed, um, Mr. Ratul actually basically lives on the Vermont line, so this is going to be a little bit of a stretch. Wow. Um, we're not competitive at all with Connecticut salaries. We're competitive with Southern Vermont salaries. Yeah. <laughs> which is. With gas mileage. <laughs> yeah. So I don't. We're going to give this a shot. Uh, Right. It did put in the note here, it is going to be very complicated. Um, he has a Massachusetts paramedic license, not a Connecticut paramedic license. So we're going to have to bring him on as an EMT, because he has a Connecticut EMT license, but not a paramedic. Um, and then he's going to have to go through the paperwork and the process of challenge and try and get his Connecticut medic license. And then even when that happens, he's going to have to go through a full precepting process um, and get a number of training and certifications that's not required in Massachusetts. How long would that take? Best of luck, if he starts here in two weeks, I can get him on the road in January. Okay. It's going to take that long for me to get him up the road, up to speed. Wow. And un unfortunately, because I can't get a Connecticut, I can't get a Connecticut paramedic. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, the paramedics in Connecticut that are looking for a job, there's a reason why nobody's hired them. Yeah. Well, well said. <laughs> Understood. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Can we have a motion to uh, hire Christopher Ratula? It's a full-time firefighter paramedic. Yeah, I'd be happy to make that motion to uh, authorize uh, the hiring of uh, Christopher Rotula as a uh, full-time paramedic. Okay. Well, he'll start as a firefighter EMT, firefighter. Oh, firefighter and then he'll transition to a firefighter EMT. paramedic okay. when he gets okay. to Connecticut. Firefighter license. EMT. Okay. I'm sorry. To, to, to later transition as a paramedic. Okay. okay. Yeah. Later transition. And this is positions already budgeted for. It's already in okay. an existing position we have open. Very good. Uh, I'll second that motion. Is it Ratula or is it Ratola? What, what's I haven't. R U T O L A. That's what it says on the resume. Oh, probably, probably might be Ratola, sorry. Okay, yeah. that's okay. It's Ratola, not Ratula? Yeah, sorry. I think we got okay. that straight for the record. Yeah. I'll change it on the front, maybe I'll remember that. He does need okay. to remember. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in support of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, good to keep you here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't let them go. <laughs> uh, good organizing the agenda here, too. Good very job. No uh, discussion and regionalization of EMS services with Summers and the town of Stafford. Uh, Chief, it might be helpful for you to describe uh, the current state of affairs, uh, particularly with regards to uh, how this really has been brought to light by the Trinity Ambulance uh, Need for Services uh, hearing that was recently concluded and 
discussions that we've had with the town of Stafford, and I'll, I'll join in with you as you sure. state the facts. So, obviously, it's a, just for those that aren't familiar, real familiar, the state of Connecticut operates medical emergency medical services, uh, basically what they call on three different levels. Um, there's a first responder level, which would typically be a fire truck or a police officer, something like that. Um, which we do with the fire department in summers. The second level, is they call it the R2, is the actual ambulance that does the basic transport, usually licensed at the BLS level. And then the third level is the paramedic level, which is the highest level of medical care. Um, that can either be on the ambulance or as, a par as an intercept. Um, summers is fortunate. Our one department, Summers Fire Department, holds all three licenses and we respond in all three capacities. Um, the police department had in the past also done some supplemental R1. Uh, first responder. So if it was like an auto accident, obviously the police would assist us there as well. But it allows us to have um, good coverage and control over um, what we do, what services we provide, how we have coverage, things like that. It is very heavily regulated by the state of Connecticut, obviously, Department of Public Health. Um, we have to provide 24-hour coverage and so on. Um, so in, in what had happened is years ago there had been um, so obviously the fire departments in this area, a lot of us, us, Stafford, Ellington, all had like the, our, the first responder and the basic transport pretty well covered. Um, the paramedic level had been kind of wide open for a little while. Years ago, for people that are familiar, it used to be Superior Ambulance. It got built up by AMR. They moved out of the area. And they basically left the licenses on the table for anybody that wanted to come by and pick them up for that paramedic level. Um, ASM, the Ambulance Service of Manchester, had been up out of Stafford for working with Johnson Hospital for um, a few years, but they never were committed to the license. They were at, they happened to be in the neighborhood doing transfers for Johnson, and if they happened to be available for a 911 call, they would take it, but not necessarily would guarantee us a level of it coverage. Sporadic, right. It was yeah. sporadic. Yeah, yeah. So we looked at our numbers in town. Um, when we needed a paramedic years, like probably four or five years ago, we started doing averages. It was about 68% of the time we'd actually get a paramedic, which meant the other 30 percent of the time, if I had somebody in a life-threatening issue, there was no paramedic to, to be found or have available. Um, we reached out to some of the commercial companies to see what the contracts were. We didn't think it was cost-effective at the time. We thought it would be better, beneficial for the town to look into starting our own program, which we did. So we rolled up our own program, and we run our own paramedics now um, in-house. Um, and when we did that, the state, obviously the state regulated, said you have to have a paramedic on 24 hours a day. You have to respond within so, many, so much time and things like that which we're meeting all of our, our milestones very well right now. Um, we went from having a paramedic available 68, 70% of the time. The last time I did the numbers, we were at like 99.5% of the time. Wow. Um, so we are definitely meeting, hitting our marks and getting the paramedics to the scenes when we have critical incidents. Is that when you showed us all the equipment at Rotary too? Yep. Yeah, okay. That's when we first went, started looking at li going right, live and getting right, everything yeah. out okay. there. Um, so the, basically the thought behind the paramedic program is that you're taking the emergency room and bringing it out to the field to do an advanced level of care in the field versus the basic level, which we also do in town, while it's a great service, a lot of it is stabilizing the patient, packaging them, and bringing them to the hospital. The paramedic program is trying to bring them, basically bring the hospital out into the field. Um, so we're doing a lot of that. It's working really well in our town. Um, what has happened is Stafford never picked that license up off the table. Um, so it's still sitting out there kind of in, in a void, a black hole. The state has kind of been pushing Stafford and everybody, us and everybody else around, um, saying somebody needs to fill that gap. Um, to fill that gap short term, Stafford went, well, Summers is close by, we're going to call them. <laughs> um, by state law, I can't say no to mutual requests for assistance. So if somebody picks up the phone and says, I need you to come, part of our license for the state to get our paramedic licenses, they said, if somebody else calls you, you can't just say, I'm only going to respond to my town, and I refuse to respond to another town. So is it Ellington, too? Do they call you? Or is it they can, but Ellington, actually, the AMR uh, and the Rockville Medic have the primary license oh, in Ellington. Okay. So they will cover, so if it's a first call for service, Rockville, Rockville Medic will okay, carry it. Okay. Now, if the Rockville Medic's tied up or Ellington has multiple calls at once, absolutely we're available okay. as an assistant. Okay. I just wondered how that works. Correct. Yeah. And it's a mutual aid agreement that we're all part of. So if Summers gets multiple calls at once, I can bring the Rockville medic in, I can bring an Enfield medic in, I can bring East Windsor. Okay. Okay. So we do have quite a bit of mutual aid back and forth, okay. and we help each other out when, when there's a major incident and things like that. Um, or you're just, there are times when we'll have six calls at once. I mean, sure. <laughs> it, 
it's funny, we can go 12 hours with no calls and literally in 20 minutes we'll have three or four calls on the top of each other. Um, and you can't staff for that and everybody kind of just has to adjust for that. Um, so, but what lately is happening is, is so we have been, Stafford doesn't have a paramedic right now. The ASM paramedic, if you're not familiar, um, Trinity is going through a lot of different changes with what they're going on. They basically canceled their agreement with ASM to have ASM up there for a lot of different political reasons, which I won't get into public. Yeah, um, but so ASM is no longer staffing a truck up there and leaving a truck up there. So by them not having a truck up there, Stafford's basically been kind of left in the limbo and they've been calling Summers yeah, quite a bit. You've been, one, you've been the ones that now they're responding. Now they're like, who's the closest one on the map? We're the closest one. Yeah. Um, so last year or this year, we're probably going to be on track to do 600 to 700 calls in Stafford. Um, just the paramedic, so just the fly car goes out. Um, with EMS calls, the good thing about EMS is there is billing. So we did, we did sit down with finance, we did the accounting, we did the numbers. We're not making a lot of money on those calls, but we're making a little bit of money. It's kind of just about breaks even, a little bit. Um, I was wondering why I was constantly seeing you guys going towards Stafford. Yep. I mean, seriously, I expect. Correct. So we, we, go to, we go to Stafford quite a bit. Yeah. Um, to be honest, we're probably making somewhere in the neighborhood of $100 to $110 a call. Okay. So it's not, we're not talking like huge, huge money here. Yeah, well, at, least not, at least it's not costing us. It's not costing us. And the, the, the big point that we put at right now is we're looking at is we're making sure that our medic isn't in Stafford and we're missing calls in Summers. Right. So that's our big concern. We need to look at that long term as everybody's call volume is going up. Um, and I know other people have expressed concern is at what point does it get to the point where Summers ends up having to put on more staff right. to cover the fact that we might end up having medics going over the hill for St Stafford. So we need um, to have a conversation with Stafford. We need to have a conversation with Stafford. The other thing is just our response time. If you live in Stafford, I feel bad for some of the residents. Oh, especially if you're way over, way, way over. You live on the Union or months in a month in line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's a 30-minute response time for us. So if right. you're having a heart attack, 30 minutes to get a paramedic on your door is not a great no, response. No. Um, so we have had some conversations back and forth with Stafford. Um, we kind of have a, a little bit of a band-aid, a little bit of a trial period right now with the whole building official agreement that we have back and forth. Sure. So as you know, there's a shared service agreement between Summers and Stafford. They're basically loaning us the building official and in return to kind of cut some of the costs back down, we're loaning them some fire marshal staff. Our fire, a lot of our paramedics are cross trained as fire marshals. Okay. So the thought was is if 10 hours a week we can put a paramedic slash fire marshal or fire marshal firefighter in downtown Stafford that may cut our response time to some of the calls in Stafford down. So we've, we've been exploring that. That's a tentative agreement, which I know is on the agenda for <coughs> extension as well tonight. But what we were talking with um, is Stafford trying to figure out what are they doing long term. Yeah. Um, Trinity Ambulance, Trinity Hospital wanted to put their own ambulances up at Johnson. Um, their application process has not been going as smoothly as they would have liked. Um, it is being contested by several of the large commercial providers in the state now, oh. um, AMR. Through a red flag, their hearing that was supposed to be on June 19th, uh, May 19th, got canceled because the lawyers got involved and everything came to a grinding halt. Um, so, and Stafford's kind of like, do we want Trinity to be the provider? Are they kind of they're happy with the service that we're providing from Summer? So, they're like, we're like, okay, do we want to formalize this? Do they want to use Trinity? And what we really need to do is get both boards of selectmen. Yes. In a, in a room at the same time, right. um, express where you're coming from, what you're looking for, what your needs are, um, how do we ensure level of service in both communities, I think is going to be a big part of it, who's eventually going to get the licenses, so the state's council looking over this whole thing saying at some point they would like somebody to fill that, take that license for, for Stafford and own the legal responsibility to be the paramedic for Stafford. Um, so Stafford has said, hey, do we want to take it, but at the same time, we're not sure if we want to pick up that legal responsibility without getting something in return. So I think that's where the selectmen we were talking about, talking with Mr. Keeney, is it would really make sense to have both boards of both selectmen right. and the chiefs of the related services, because right. they've got two different fire departments and a separate EMS agency and or finance involved. Yeah. I mean, Wait, and also yeah, I, I, quick, quick, quick question. Sure. So you're talking about the lawyers getting involved. They don't really have anything to get in with if it's between the towns getting a license then it's not private in it's not a private concern so then your lawyers are kind of out of it then. yeah this yeah this is this isn't the towns would have first preference on those licenses yeah, i think what he's talking about is primarily a procedural errors that were made in in okay. 
the application itself yeah. and there was lack of notification to oh, the okay. appropriate parties. And All right. Because of that, the judge or the hearing yeah, officer sir. just threw it threw out the request, which means they have to start over again, which they started at, what, six or seven months ago? It, it puts the clock back three months easily. Okay. So we have this three-month window where Trinity can't do anything. They've got to they've go for a new hearing date. They've got to do re-notifications. They've got to give everybody certified letters. That whole process has to start again. Um, and so in the meantime, Stafford's kind of, one day they really want Trinity, and one day they really want Summers. And we need to sit them down and say, you need to make up your mind. Fisher Cudbury. Yeah. So I was just wondering, since th we're getting you know, land use from them, is there any possibility of us kind of working out some type of agreement with I land use? And I think that's absolutely worth the selectmen, the both yeah. boards yeah, having that conversation. Swap services almost like, yes. and see how we could, we could provide one thing and they would provide another and it would kind of like be like a wash. Correct. That's we we'll want to have I mean, this conversation. That would be idealistic, but that's what I'm kind of thinking, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's what I said. Yeah. Right now, we've got we do have a little bit of position because we have the license. We are providing the right. service. We can have some of those discussions, and that's why we thought about it. Um, as soon as Trinity comes in the in the picture, though, Trinity can come in and scoop the license, and then that conversation goes out the window. Oh. So it'd be better to be proactive. It's much better to be proactive. Yeah. So the thinking is that uh, the two towns working together. Uh, could put together an agreement or an understanding mm -hmm. or basic planning of practices yeah. that might work and um, act under that agreement. And uh, this would be something that might come out of a joint board of selectmen meeting for both the town of Stafford and the town of Summers meeting jointly. Sure. I spoke with uh, First Selectman Sal Titus of Stafford a couple of days ago. He was interested in it. He said he would like to speak to his board about it. Uh, but he seems to think that this indeed could be something that would be important to Stafford. And uh, particularly in this uh, sort of void of, or vacuum of yep. uncertainty as to what is going to happen in the future and what is best for each of the two towns. You know, one of the concerns, of course, is is, is the expense that might be summers might incur yep. providing the services to Stafford. Another of course is what you mentioned is the uh, the impact it might have on summers ability your ability to provide services to summers. Correct. Yep. Uh, and Which we need to be very cautious of getting cognizant of that. Right. Right. Well, it would be interesting. We had a conversation, and maybe there could be addition. You know, somehow additional staff brought into yep. the picture too. Right. If Correct. We talked about uh, there are a lot of issues. Yeah. It's not only staff, but it's it's the simple logistics of if we went over there, where would we park? Correct. Mm, right. They don't have any garages. They don't have spare bays. Oh, so they don't have anything. They so have they're full. They so we, that, those are the types of things that's that. That's a big we, deal. That's a big deal. Um, so and we do know that Stafford, long term, five, ten years down the road, is looking to eventually go paramedic or ALS in their own department. Um, but it, as we found with our own department, it was a two or three year process in our own, sure. and they're, they're, they know it's going to take them probably twice as long as that, so they're talking at least five years out for them to get their own ALS program off the ground. If Trinity comes in and scoops up the license, then they, they basically lock them out, and they're forced into a contract with Trinity, which they may not be happy with. Okay. So this would give them an opportunity to put us in as a placeholder, but we wouldn't necessarily lock Is there them. Any Facility at Johnson that could be used uh, to park. That is Trinity, though. So Trinity is going to put their own ambulance. Well, yeah. yeah, but you know, <laughs> I was just curious if we jump, yeah. if we jump, you know, if we got in there first. Trinity, the, the Trinity, Trinity has offered in the past, but Trinity's comes with quite a bit of more complications. They're sure, sure. they're looking for their primary concern for the Trinity Hospital is to get the transfers out. Sure. And to be perfectly frank, we're not interested in becoming a transfer. Yeah, everyone right. agrees yeah, yeah. that that's a good use of Trinity ambulance. Yes, it, that makes a perfect, We everybody yeah, yeah. would like to have Trinity to have their own ambulance up there right, to right. do the transfers. Right. It's the 911 side of the house that staff was debating, is it better to use Summers, is it better to use Trinity? Sure. Are there other options? Um, as I said, we're talking about the partnership. We've already got a fire marshal in their town 10 hours a week, which has yeah. been working very well. So that has several occasions been allowed the medic to be around the corner down the street from where the right, call is. Right. Um, it's cut response times down notably, so that has helped. 
And so do we expand that program? Do we minimize? So right. Those are the types of things well, that nice we select. Well, it would be nice if you come up with some options for us, you yep. know, at the meeting yep. and say, you know, what in terms of us, you know, providing more care for them, you know, more more uh, help, yep. you know, there and, and then maybe in exchange for us providing them more on the medical end, maybe they can help us with the building yep. inspection end and kind of like a trade. Yep. You think that would make sense? We could certainly, that's certainly something we were talking about putting on the table and having discussions with. Yeah. Um, so key, key people at that meeting would obviously be uh, finance people from both towns. Uh, and I'm just, maybe you could suggest who are the people that you think should be there, yeah. particularly on the Stafford side, because you've had experience with all of them. Yeah. Obviously they've got, their, their selectmen are going to need to be involved, and they've got two separate fire departments and a separate EMS agency, so I would mm -hmm. say the chiefs of those three services mm -hmm. or the representatives mm -hmm. would want to be present or participate in, in that meeting. Um, as I said, there's there's a lot of flexibility Maybe the land there. use people too, do you think they need to be involved? I'm just asking. I'm not sure if they okay. need to, I think this preliminary is more of what what's their vision for their EMS. Okay, got it. Okay. Once you get a vision for EMS, then that may ripple into the, the agreement with the land use, but yes, I think we can throw we've already got the parties and the players and the finances okay. I think are pretty well locked down on the land use piece. Okay. All right, all right, great. Okay. Don't want to throw too many things into the equation early on. Yeah, I, I'm, just trying, <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, I'm going too, I'm too far ahead. Sorry, right. I apologize. And I, as I said, I, I know some of the selectmen have, have voiced their opinions in the past, that, especially Mr. Meyer, about us going over to Stafford quite a bit and recouping costs and things like that. So, um, and there's, do we want to try making a profit off the deal or not and things like that. So some commercial ambulances, they do that, they provide a paramedic intercept, but they charge a lot more for that service because well, they're commercial entity and that's what they try to do. Right. So we haven't taken that model in the past. Is that something that our selectmen want us to look at? But you know, like, you know, like in Massachusetts where I grew up, there was a lot of regional things, even with schools. Yeah. And people, instead of trying to charge somebody, it, it was, I found that people were more willing to sit down at the table and what could we do together? Yep. And if we kind of work and do it in a civil fashion, we could come up with something. And, right. and you could come up with a good agreement, I would think. And, they had to give something, we have to give something, and hopefully we'll come up with a solution. Yep. Yeah, Bob, I think that's exactly the right approach and that both towns could benefit from this kind of public discussion. Yeah. And uh, basically doing homework in advance and, and then maybe you might have one or more than one meeting, but uh, come up with nice something. Yeah. You know, we, we, we certainly have some proposals, but I said, I think part of it is before we Got to get started jump to yeah. having proposals and, and coming to you with some contracts, yeah. I thought yeah. it would be beneficial to give the both boards of selectmen on both sides and, and the chiefs of the services mm -hmm. an opportunity to express them where they where they think they want to go. Right. What, what their vision is. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like a reverse right. listening session. I want to hear from the politicians and then <laughs> the guys in the weeds can make it work. <laughs> I got it. I was just trusting you guys to get the solution. <laughs> so I, I sense that we have support for uh, planning such a joint uh, board of selectmen. Oh yeah, I think it would be a great idea. Yeah. And we'll try to do that sometime in the next uh, few weeks, possibly. Yeah, yeah. So let me let me know. I'll try to get it in. Great. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, you, Chief. <coughs> you might oh, want to stay there for a minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the next, next item. Uh, a discussion and action to authorize the first selectman to sign a three-month extension to the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Stafford. Oh, you skipped the uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we missed that ordinance. The, ordinance. Uh, the, fee, the fees ordinance. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Next item yeah, here is uh, discussion possible action for the fee ordinance, section 114, to add Article 5, Health Department fee schedule, and Article 6, Public Works fee schedule. So the Board of Selectmen held a public hearing on May 19th, 2022 at 7 p.m. to take public comment on the amendment of the scheduled fee ordinances, sections 114, adding Article 5, Health Department fee schedule, and Article 6, Public Works fee schedule. As I recall, there wasn't uh, any comment at no. that uh, public no. hearing. So we're looking for a motion to adopt the ordinance of the fee schedule, fee, uh, schedule of fees, 
section 114 adding article 5 health department the schedule and article six public works the schedule to be effective fifteen days after the publication the publication will be published in summary form no i just it's just that's your motion right oh yeah that's fine that's okay fine. Good. okay i'll second the motion okay yes. <laughs> i just you read it so i just didn't know i'm sorry yeah i wasn't sure you, you had it in front of me. oh yeah i did that's okay, okay. i understand right. it all right uh any further discussion so we've already talked about this we've had a public hearing there's been no comment um, or it's a motion to support it Make all those pass. in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion passes accepting the uh, fees ordinance. Hey, you know, Chief Rose, yeah. since, since I have you here, I, I know you guys have been working on the uh, negotiations, you know, with your, your employee uh, mm -hmm. contract. And, uh, you know, with next week, I'd, be, I'd like to, you know, hear what you guys came up with from your attorney of the as yourself. So if I call you and irritate you, find out <laughs> Guys have been negotiating. Yeah. That's where I'm coming from. Sounds good. Yeah, we were a little limited in with the contract bylaws. On there's almost like a you can't say can't much. You can't say a whole lot until yeah. Yeah. it gets to a certain point. Um, but we can give you a general feel. Well, general after, feel. after that that seven day period there, that yep. we have to wait for. I'll, I'll Absolutely. Yep. Is that okay? I think Selectman Meyer notified me earlier today, uh, sometime around noon, basically. Stating that he'd be interested in an executive session yep. to review that, and I know Attorney McHale said he'd make himself available to be on the phone for that. Uh, possibly you could be available yep, sure. as well. Yeah. Like we even start preliminary. Yep. We have a preliminary meeting before negotiations. Yeah, so we we'll try to schedule that maybe sometime next week. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we are aware of everyone's availability. Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. Great. Great. Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda, which is what I started before, out of of order <laughs> is a discussion and action to authorize the first selectman to sign a three month extension to the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Stafford for bi the building official. They're providing a building official for our use and are providing fire marshal services uh, for the town of Stafford. Basically, as uh, Chief Roach mentioned, it's a shared services agreement, something that we've had in place since March of this year. In fact, it was signed on March 10th mm -hmm. by uh, First Selectman Titus in Stafford and myself and uh, we're seeking uh, authorization by the Board of Selectmen to extend this agreement for an additional three months. I've uh, spoken with uh, First Selectman Titus about it. He's in full support and uh, we're just asking that the board authorized me to sign the extension of the existing agreement for an additional three months. Sure. And so there's some language uh, that's been uh, added, you've got in front of you, mm -hmm. which is was provided by the town attorney recently. Oh, okay. That would just be, uh, basically it says, um, the top parties, yeah, parties, parties yeah, agree to term with the agreement. Right, the other yeah. stuff was already That there. was already original. Okay, okay. original yeah. agreement. Uh, I just didn't know what was added. Okay. Yeah, the agreement, it just says, the okay. amendment says the parties agree that the term of the agreement shall be extended until March uh, 14th, 2022. All the terms and conditions of the original agreement remain in full force and effect. So and this uh, will be extended now until September 14th, right. 2022. I need a motion to uh, authorize me to, as first selectman, to sign this agreement. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion for you to sign place. the action to authorize, uh, well, we'll uh, to authorize you to sign a three-month extension to the intermunicipal agreement with the Town of Stafford for building official and fire marshal service. Great. Thank you. I'll second that. All those, any, any further discussion? No. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda, we have uh, approval of minutes. Mm -hmm. Approval of minutes of May 19, 2022 special meeting. It was held at 5.30 with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Board of Selectmen waives the uh, reading of the minutes of the special 5.30 meeting. May 19th, and the minutes of said meeting be approved. That's the motion. One second, that. 
I have the second that. Uh, any further discussion? No. I've reviewed the minutes and uh, amended and, and edited them to the extent I thought they were needed. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item, uh, approval of minutes of uh, May 19, 2022, regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen. And Board of Selectmen waives the uh, reading of the minutes of the regular meeting from May 19, 2022, and that the minutes of said meeting be approved. That's the motion. Second that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in support of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Finally, uh, approval of minutes of the May 19, 2022 special public hearing of the Board of Selectmen. Board of Selectmen waives the reading of the minutes of the special public hearing meeting uh, from May 19, 2022, and that the minutes of said meeting be approved. That's the motion. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Motion to adjourn. Okay. That's our second down. Okay. All those in support say aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, 723.